Welcome to episode one of Get It, a new podcast produced by Growing Empowered Together, or Get for short. We pop up in every corner of San Antonio and ask the young people everywhere about the issues that affect them most and why they do or don't vote. We share some laughs, get off topic sometimes, and learn some things together too. Community engagement is important, and we get it, and we're growing empowered together. So today, my name is Roy Aguillon. I'm the host of The Carpenter's Apprentice and one of your hosts here at the Get It Podcast, and I'd like to introduce all of the co-hosts, and we'll this start here. This is Selena Santibanez, and I'm the founder of The Boardroom Project, as well as a District 2 candidate that did not make it, but I just still want you to know who I am. My name is Chad Hankins. I'm a writer. I run a website called Citizen Roots Press where we talk about uh, any and all political issues. And I am also a voter for Selena. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? I'm Ryan Thompson. I'm a recent UTSA grad uh, where I majored in communication and I'm also a journalist. Nice. Hey, listen, okay, before we move any further, I think people really want to know who each of us is. So why don't we start specifically with you, Ryan, and tell us a little bit more about who you are and why you give a shit about politics. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm Ryan. I am a millennial. Um, I'm pretty engaged in my community. So a lot of my journalism work was actually in social and economic issues. I'm particularly interested in local issues, so things that are happening in my community itself all around me. And uh, getting my generation out to vote is super important to me, so that's why I am here. Chad? I'm Chad, I'm a much older millennial. <laughs> really, really on the north end of that, on the north end of that age group. Um, but, you know, I've been into politics since I was a much younger millennial, and, you know, part of it was, I got a Dead Kennedys tape from my uncle when I was 10, and I didn't know what they were talking about, but I definitely felt like something wasn't right. So as I got a little bit older, I started understanding and researching politics and seeing where all the kind of cracks formed. From there, I just kept, you know, of course, growing my punk rock collection and <laughs> learning more and more about the importance of not only the, the federal government, but local government and their role in our everyday lives. Selena? Yes, yeah, so I grew up in the east side of San Antonio, which which is one of the most disenfranchised neighborhoods. I'm pretty I'm a product of the community. I'm a product of all the programs. Um, but it wasn't until I put my my name in that ring that I really got a sense of how fucked up it is. And there are so many things that we need to work on. But ultimately, it's all about communicating and letting people from all walks of life have the same opportunity to be informed and engaged. You know, you have an interesting perspective on voter apathy, which is the number one goal of this podcast is to try to help uh, combat voter apathy and get more people engaged in the system. So in this last city election that we just had, the municipal race, what was the turnout? Do you know? Um, I do know. So we had less than 11 percent. As a city, we had a Wow. Yeah, as a city, we had 11 percent. Mm. And I just got back from our Leadership Texas programming that said um, San Antonio and Dallas, as one of the largest cities in Texas, actually had the lowest turnout rate um, in the state of Texas. So when you were talking to people at the doors, was anybody telling you like, nah, I'm not going to vote? Yeah, I had people that just straight. Well, first of all, people were like, oh, so how, what do you feel about Chick-fil-A? Right? Like that was the <laughs> Wait, number what? one concern um, of people in all neighborhoods. Really? Um, and I shouldn't say in all neighborhoods, but just neighborhoods that that seemed to be the hot topic, right? That was what wow. people were hearing on the news, saw on the radio, read about on Facebook. That was probably the same thing. Or they would ask, so are you Trump or are you Bernie? And that was uh, that was their right. deciding of whether they were going to talk to me or not. Hmm. So what do you think of Chick-fil-A? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good question. <laughs> so would you say like the voter apathy? No answer. <laughs> no, I'm gonna right? get to it, I'm gonna get to it. She's like, we're getting there. We're, <laughs> we're trying to get some sponsors. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so would you say voter apathy <laughs> is like across the board or a particular uh, group of people, age group, race, social class? What would you say? You know, for me and in, in my personal experience, it, mm -hmm. it's these major cities. I think people are just so worn out of mm -hmm. being fed mm -hmm. BS time and time again. Mm -hmm. um, and really that people are working so hard, having to put food on their table, working two jobs, taking their babies on the buses. Like people just 
don't have that energy to be sold again, mm -hmm. you know, every two years. And, you know, we're, we'll talk about Chick-fil-A, but it was interesting to see how <laughs> Trinity today said that their school was not supporting Chick-fil-A and so forth. Mm -hmm. So Ooh, drums at the pulpit. So, yeah. so to see that come out, it was pretty interesting as well. Look, in my opinion, I, I understand if people felt a certain way, if they felt that their religious or civil rights were, um, you know, were just taken upon and that the city shouldn't be making decisions for them on their behalf. I understand that and I respect that. I think we should always come to the table and have that conversation, but right. that the community should be at the conversation and that there should be a, a separation of church and state. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I grew up homeless throughout the entire country. And even in my middle school years, I had to raise myself since I was 14 in the streets of the east side, some of the most violent times in our city and our community. So for me, there are so much more just more concerning issues right. that were one of the most segregated cities in all of, all of the country. So, you know, and that we, we still continue to see this as of today, mm -hmm. even if not more. Like Dignity Hill, one of the highest property values in all of San Antonio. I live on the other side of the tracks by the AT&T and our median income is $17,000. Mm -hmm. You heard that right, $17,000. Yeah. There's you like a chain it. track that separates them, correct? Yeah, it's... Mm -hmm. it's that's, I don't yeah. think that's dollar menu stuff right Yeah, yeah oh, I yeah. mean, we, yeah, you don't even, but we don't even get that. Right. I mean, uh, it is it is really crazy. Um, you know, and I've been blessed enough to travel the world, and I've been blessed enough to live in other parts of the country. So I have, you know, I have perspective. One of them, I lived in Portland, Oregon for a few years. Um, and so to come back home to the hood and to see that there has really not been any advancement for the community or the people is really uh, heartbreaking. And that's why it's not to say that, you know, religious freedoms or civil res freedoms do not matter to me because they do. But for me and what's in front of me and what's in front of my community are things of food, hunger, shelter, and education. Hey, well, isn't it kind of cool, though? Because we're talking about voter apathy, right? Mm -hmm. So that Chick-fil-A as an issue, whether or not, what side of it you're on, I don't give a fuck. But just the issue itself will get everybody so excited Talking, that right. it will pull you into the system. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's going to be one of the keys to destroying voter apathy is these issues that seem uh, insignificant. Well, I think yeah. that there's a follow-up issue with it because mm -hmm. you – you can get them in, you can get people talking, you can get people having these conversations like we do. And I think probably every one of us has these same talks at a bar yeah. just this time we have a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you have to start with giving people the information. You know, Selena and I were talking ahead of this about how when you, whenever you go to a local politician's website, mm -hmm. you see a lot of the same thing and very little information. Yeah. So they're, built, they're basically all telling you the same nothing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes. so even if in you a different are, way. yeah, so even if you are an engaged voter and you're trying to research, like, I want to know what candidate I want. So I'm going and I'm looking on all these websites and they're saying the same, well, we want to develop the community right. and we want to <laughs> offer economic opportunities and you're like cool th thank you for the platitudes now what are you actually going to do yeah. and i think it's been a poor job of getting that information to voters to make them care and to make them vote for somebody emphatically if we learned anything in the last couple elections it's that people need motivation they're not going to keep voting for you know most people don't aren't aren't interested in voting down the party anymore no fuck and that. that's that's fuck changed that. a lot with millennials well and it's well, gonna be interesting because the straight ticket doesn't exist anymore right and so yeah. I was a presiding yeah. election judge for the past six elections so it was interesting to kind of see how my name being on the ballot this time around but people walk in and they ask the judges who sh who should I vote for who should I who do you recommend I'm only here to vote for one person. Forget yeah. straight ticket. It's like this is people are not engaged or informed at all of who's out there, where do they stand, what are the needs of the community as as of right now, not what's just seen on social media. That's hard too, though. And I, you know, before we uh, do anything else, I kind of wanted to see if we could get everybody to say like, what is your personal goal doing this podcast? And I'll give you an example. For me, I really hope that we can crack this nut. Like we can figure out exactly what it is that makes people no longer give a shit and at least find a couple remedies for it so that we can change these things. That, that's my hope. For me, I'm going to say it's um, look, it's, it's all about education and communication, doing that in two languages, if not three, right? But at the end of the day for us, we have people registered, but we need to get them to the polls. Right. That is the biggest disconnect. 
How do we address that? Right. And we, we, I think we combat that a lot. You see, like on campus, we're always getting them signed up, but can we get them to the polls? And I think that's that we have 50% of the problem down. So like our generation will get out and we'll protest about something for <laughs> till the day is like, as long as the day is, or whatever. But we'll, <laughs> you know what I'm getting at? We'll protest and we'll scream and we'll yell about it, but we won't take the extra step to go and vote and like make our issues, the things that we care about known. And so I think it's more about, we like things like super immediate, like social media, you're, you're, you get likes. You know what I mean? People comment on your stuff. It's super immediate. With voting, it's not. You have to stand outside. You have to wait. You have to wait to see who uh, wins. And when they don't, you're discouraged. And then the cycle continues. Um, so basically, I my goal is to just add to all the things that we care about and all of our priorities, voting and the community and things that actually matter to us to be added to that list. I think it's it's simple. But yeah. Well, and the, the easy summation of my goal personally is I, I did an article in 2015 uh, and I, I titled it, it is not your duty to vote. And it, you know, that, that kind of got people's interest. But in the, in the body of the article, it was like, it's your duty to be an informed voter, not just to go out and vote. Don't just go push the button that has the letter that you think you like next to it. It's your duty to be an informed voter. And for me, my goal is to get people hungry about getting that information about policies, about candidates, getting them to tell the truth, getting them to just not give you this kind of mindless, <laughs> you know, half of an idea and yeah. that's being generous, but to actually tell you what are the, what they're going to do and to be clear about it. There should be transparency mm -hmm. and there should be, it shouldn't, it shouldn't take a deep dig to find out what a candidate is in favor of, what they support, what they're going to do, what their ideas are. You know, and I think for me, that's that's my biggest thing. Hey, can we talk a little bit more about uh, how we all came together? I don't. I wonder if we could tell the origin story about how this podcast got started and whatnot. And I'd like to kind of hear from your perspective first, right? Um, so I've been working with Git for like two years now. Um, uh, my term as a journalist at UTSA, I covered a story about like LGBT rights um, and kind of getting that community more civically engaged. So I wrote about an event that was happening. And then from there, just I liked everything that Git was doing, uh, super ground and like dirty, super grassroots. And that's something that I really care about. Um, so that's kind of how I got involved with this organization in general. I was just drinking in the parking lot and saw somebody walking with <laughs> snacks. I just, I just followed him in and tried to get some guacamole, but it's sure nice of y'all to invite me on. So. You know, this is Selena. Well, obviously, I'm the only woman here. Right? I'm, yeah, the only woman. I'm the only woman. Um, you know, so I, I actually was a host for Get. I've, I've come on and, and hosted and interviewed a couple of people, um, some really great people doing great work in our city, and I, and I think. Lauren and get for that experience because you just get to know some amazing people which includes y'all y'all three guys um and I'll even say something that Ryan didn't even mention but I didn't even know Ryan mm -hmm. though he interviewed me for his article mm -hmm. at UTSA yeah. and it wasn't until like we sat down and talked about it two years later yeah. and you're like oh I interviewed you oh you're yeah. Ryan I was like, I this, was, yeah I your was, voice sounded so familiar yeah, I, was like, like, <laughs> I went to go look it up and, it, and what's the the Paisan or what is mm -hmm. it and, the Paisano, yeah. and I was I looked it up and I was like, oh, that is Ryan Thompson. <laughs> yep. Oh, you did quote me yep. and all of that. So, you know, it's kind of cool that you know we all connected in some way in Definitely. shape or form. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? I forgot my own question. What I had <laughs> asked you guys. How did you uh, get involved with this podcast? Oh, right. You know what's funny? Uh, when the doc was <laughs> making this thing, uh, the get when she was putting it all together, the mm -hmm. actual organization. She had asked me to meet with her, and it was her and another lady. The lady was the mom of somebody who was dating my cousin. You know how all that shit goes. Yeah. You're just somebody, 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 right? Talk so about went, San Antonio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we sat down, and uh, they told me what they were doing, and I said, yeah, right. You're going to get people who don't vote to vote. <laughs> I was like, good luck. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then a few years later, we ran into each other again, and I was like, you know, that was uh, – I made a bad call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should have tried to help. Yeah. And so then now here we all are, and it's kind of exciting, man. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to be able to do something cool for San Antonio because there's only, as far as I know, I think only two other podcasts that focus on politics in San Antonio. Hmm. So, at, I mean, at the very least, the political nerds are only going to have the three of us. We're like right. the major exactly. networks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, also, you know what? We haven't talked about future plans for the podcast, so mm -hmm. that's really exciting. Chad, tell them about your dating shit. 
Uh, so we, we're going to do a show where we're going to kind of try to figure out how voting ties into your love life. And we're going to figure Ooh. out what are your turn ons? What are your turn offs? What are you looking for at the polls? What brings your poll to the poll? You know what I'm, so- you know what I'm oh, talking shit. about? Wow. Oh, shit. oh yeah. All right. right to something. <laughs> <laughs> we got a name. So gonna, we got a name oh, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to. Yeah. Get your poll up. Yeah, yeah. 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 (laughs) So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna help you work those polls and uh, see if we can't if we can't make some love connections (laughs) through the wonderful world of uh, voting and, and politics. Well, who wants to follow that shit up? I don't know, I don't know, but look, and for ladies and men, for whoever wants to call in, um, you yeah, know, true. yeah, call in. You're gonna get the opportunity. We're gonna give you a phone number. You're, we can take your questions live on the air, and you're gonna hear from us and our feedback and our input. But we want to hear from San Antonians from all over the city, yeah. regardless of age, race, color, income, class, last name. I don't care. I don't care whether your name has a Z or not. Um, and if you speak Spanish. I'll even translate for people. So let's make sure people, everybody have has the opportunity to get their voice heard. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Okay, Ryan. Uh, okay, so we want to get out into the community, ask some cool, some, <laughs> that was so corny. Uh, <laughs> some fun questions, kind of seeing what people, uh, how informed, how misinformed, how engaged, how disengaged, kind of some of the stupid shit that people are thinking. Uh, shoot down some myths, just really see what the community is thinking in general. And uh, you know, one of the things that I think I'm really excited about for the future is the video stuff. So I know that we're gonna try to put more video on the internet, which is good, because we got a very beautiful group here. You guys are gonna wanna see. I know you can only hear us right now, but it's, it's God, a good looking that's, crew. Yeah. We're good looking. <laughs> Don't hype it up too much, Chad. <laughs> no, They're still gonna see us, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're, oh, shit. I'm good, I'm chilling. <laughs> We definitely don't want to overpromise and underdeliver here, guys. Listen, okay? I'd say we're hitting a solid six at this table. Six and a half at least. Hey, hey, I'll take it. I'll take I'm saying, it. Well, Ryan's really bringing up the curve hey. over here, though. He's, <laughs> when it's warm, I can grow to seven. <laughs> the beard. Yeah, the beard. I'll just pull it out. Instant points. All right. Hey, I think that wraps up this uh, this thing, right? yeah. this segment. I, I should think so. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, uh, before we go, I wanted to make sure uh, that we gave everybody an opportunity to give out their social media handles and whatnot. Well, I, uh, this is Chad, <laughs> and we just, we discussed earlier, and I was made fun of at the table, I don't have a Twitter or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But if you go to Facebook, and I've got some judgy eyes on me, I'm, like, <laughs> I, like I said, older side of millennial, if you go to Facebook and you go to Citizen Roots Press, uh, you can find me there you can find my articles there you can find other people's articles there and that's literally the only thing that i have right now hey what uh, what are you going to be bringing to the podcast like what can people expect from you when they listen into the next episodes well i think i'm going to wear pants next time yes. that'd, that'd be better that's gonna that'd be, be better this that way gross. i don't have to keep on looking down yeah. chad yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's probably gonna be my main contribution at least for this next episode but uh you know a lot of angry rants, I'm, I'm sure, <laughs> in our future. Perfect. <laughs> That's what we needed. <laughs> Look, I'm, what I'm going to bring to this table is not only just my experience, but I want people to know the truth of what it's really like running for office. Because I tell you, I have done so many leadership programs, and not one of them prepared me for the practicality of what it means to run a campaign. I mean, we don't even have a woman running for mayor. Did you hear me right? So... <laughs> I want to let other women and other men know that even the, if they're younger than me and vice versa, like that they have an opportunity. So hey, that's what I hope don't to Don't forget bring. your social media. Yes. Yeah, so you can look, find me on IG at S Gibson. That's S and then G U I P Z O T. That's my husband's last name. Um, and then you can find me on Facebook. And then of course, always look me up at the boardroom project and you can find us up there too. Perfect. Ryan, you want to say anything? Um, you can look me up on Instagram. Uh, it's not about voting at all. It's just me posing in cute clothes. So <laughs> we'll start there. Uh, <laughs> so my handle is Vive Ryan, V I V E R Y A N. Uh, from me, for this podcast, you can expect uh, I play devil's advocate a lot. So I'll be doing that. Um, also, just bringing the the young point of view, um, kind of what people my age are thinking. I'm 22, by the way. Um, what they're thinking, what my friends are thinking, kind of what's going on in our mind and why maybe we're not outvoting. So just kind of bringing a new perspective, I would say. 
Yeah. Perfect. Hey, listen, uh, from me, you can expect, uh, I'll just try to get the train to run on time so that we can get the shows done. And then um, I'll try to uh, make jokes uh, and I'll try to have fun and, uh, and I'll get as uh, inebriated as I can, as often as I can on the show so that everything will be nice and exciting. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at tc.apprentice and uh, you can follow this organization as a whole on Instagram at get underscore Texas or find them on Facebook under get Texas. You guys are going to have a lot of fun with us. We're going to bring you guys some great news from here in the community. Anything you guys want to say before we go? Hey, I appreciate y'all. It's all about just being engaged and being informed. And like I said, I just want to bring what what's what happens behind the curtains right like we get sold and fed so much but i want to let you know what it's really like so I, i'm just excited to be part of this team and i think we all have our own point of views um and it'll just be interesting to c collaborate on this so i'm really excited dude you're gonna spill all the fucking tea i'm gonna <laughs> i mean i've been waiting patiently all the tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. oh man you gotta stay tuned <laughs> episode two we're gonna be talking to people inside of a bar to figure out why they do or do not vote it's gonna be really fun you guys are gonna enjoy it here on this podcast we get it every single day join us next time for our next episode we'll see you then Bye. Bye.